Yeah, no. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are live this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it's Jacob's birthday. Where is Jacob? Yeah, I show Jacob. Happy birthday. How are you? Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to Jacob! Happy birthday to you! Okay, Jacob uh, turned 14 today. Okay. okay, so the gospel for today comes from St. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister left me by myself to do the serving? It sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Papa, I'm the only one cleaning. Papa, I'm the only one doing this. My sister, my brother, not doing anything. So... We are sometimes like Martha complaining to Jesus that she's the only one doing the chores. Yeah? That the others are not lifting a finger to do the chores. Okay. Anyway, then look, look at what our Lord said. Uh, so she was complaining to Jesus. Lord, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her, please. Tell her, please. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is only one thing necessary. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken away from her. Ain't that, ain't that remarkable? See, our Lord said, there's only one thing necessary. Only one thing necessary. And Mary has chosen the better part. So here is a story where Jesus, Jesus goes to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Lazarus okay, his three friends. Well, these are uh, sisters okay, and their brother Lazarus. And Jesus and his apostles would often go there. They would often go there in order to do what? Eating, to rest. To relax. Okay? In order to rest, to relax, and to have some time with, with friends. Okay? To have some time with friends. To get away from their busy uh, daily ministry. To get away from the work they were doing. Okay? And uh, have some time to rest. Have some time to be with their friends. And there was Martha and Mary. Of course, Martha and Mary, you know, they, they were uh, like, like most women. They get to be busy serving. They get to be busy attending to their visitors, right, to their friends. But there was, there was Mary who decided that, well, today I think I'm going to be staying here by the feet of Jesus and just listen. Just just visit with him. Just really absorb as much as I can from the master. See? So this is Mary uh, spending that time for herself. Resting by the feet of Jesus. So that mutual visiting that they're doing with each other eh, is rest. Eh, is rest. And it's also, oh, who's getting some ice there? <laughs> Chevelle, Chevelle, let's minimize making noise. I, I get a little distracted. Sorry. Uh, but Chevelle is like Martha. She's busy serving uh, water and things like that. So, <laughs> so anyway, 
So, uh, and so Martha complains. Martha complains to Jesus. Said, Jesus, look at my sister. She doesn't even lift a finger to help me here in the kitchen. And there are too, there's so many of you. There are 13 of you we need to serve uh, 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 meals to. And she doesn't even... And then what does Jesus say? Shh, 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 shh. Martha, Martha, Martha. Hey? Don't worry. We're not, we're not guests in your house. We're not... We're not visitors, right? We are, we are family here. So don't worry about uh, putting up the best show, right? Don't worry about trying to put up the best show or trying to impress us. We are not guests here, right? So Mary, Mary has chosen the better part of these kinds of visits, which is what? To spend time with each other. To spend time talking, to spend time uh, visiting, to spend time learning from each other, to spend time really engaging one another and learning from one another and being more intimate with one another, which is what really friendships are all about, right? So, uh, so well, Martha uh, had to hear it from Jesus, right? Stop! Stop what you're doing there, uh, because I'm not going to I'm not going to prohibit Mary from uh, having the best part. The best part is to have this intimacy with me right now. That's the best part. Now, there's plenty for us to learn with this little story of Jesus, Martha, and Mary. And what is that? Many times, you and I, we can be too busy attending to matters of this world. Many times, we are so preoccupied, not only with our schoolwork, but uh, with uh, work in the office, work in the factory, with uh, politics, with uh, uh, concerns of money, with uh, uh, worries about uh, living life. Right? We get too worried and too concerned, too preoccupied with everything around us. And we forget the better part. We forget the best part of living. And what is the best part of living? It is to always commune with Jesus. It is to put Jesus always before us it is to be communicating with jesus all the time it is to be spending time with jesus that is the best part and if only we avail of it if only we avail of that opportunity and that chance to be with jesus it will never be taken away from us it will never be taken away from us how shall we put this into practice in our everyday lives? I mean, uh, we live in the middle of the world. We are not monks who uh, perhaps uh, spend most of the day contemplating God, right? Because that is their vocation. That is their calling. But you and I, who have been called by God to be right here in the middle of the affairs of the world, in the middle of our school work, in the middle of our uh, professional work, in the middle of uh, the concerns of the world, okay? how are we going to put Jesus, to put time with Jesus it, during our day? How are we going to spend the better part of the days with Jesus? My recommendation is to put it on a schedule. Put it on a schedule, very simple, right? Spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time with Jesus. And Jesus is not asking you to be there with him at his feet the whole day. Okay? He is just perhaps wanting and longing for your visit for short periods during the day. God bless you. To at least spend a few minutes of your 16 hour waking hours to be spent with Jesus 
in a very intimate way. And I would recommend, let us put that in our schedule. Okay? You know, it's very, it's very customary that all of us now have all of our calendars uh, everywhere from the phone to our desks and we plan everything we do. Right? We even plan vacations. We even plan what we do on the weekends. We plan, we plan everything. And we have our own schedule too in the house, right? From the moment we wake up to the time we go to bed, we have a schedule. But within that very busy day, within that organized day, we can always squeeze in some time for prayer. In our family, we do that after Mass. We immediately uh, proceed to the Adoration Chapel. And there is where we spend a few minutes face to face with our Lord, by the feet of our Lord. See? By the feet of our Lord. Who was asking me the other day uh, why I always kneel uh, in the Adoration Chapel right there uh, at the foot of the monstrance, right there at the foot of that, of that altar, right? Well, uh, you know, because that's the closest place I can be <laughs> with our Lord. And I want to have that time to be very, very close to Him. I want to have that time for myself. That is my selfish time. To be, <laughs> to be very, very close. Uh, two feet away. Two feet away from the Holy Eucharist in that monstrance. Uh, so that it is only me and our Lord face to face. And that I will not be distracted like Martha with all the other goings on around me in that adoration chapel. Right? At least I can have my uh, few minutes focused on Jesus in that monstrance for those minutes of the day. And then, uh, of course, this is something that you kids perhaps have not observed or you do not know. Is that I also devote about 10 minutes... Uh, different chunks of the day where I spend some time by myself praying. Okay? So sometimes you would see me there in my office, right? Sleeping. Seemingly, <laughs> seemingly sleeping. <laughs> but uh, those are actually moments that I have uh, cut out of my schedule, cut out of the day in order to do a little uh, personal prayer. Okay? mental prayer where I could be alone with, with Jesus, with our Lord, praying, uh, um, you know, in the middle of my busy day. Okay? So that is something that we can do and we can practice. And it doesn't take much. It does not really take much. You know, maybe for you kids, you can take five minutes. Okay? Five minutes or two minutes or whatever number of minutes you want. And you can spread it all throughout the day. It doesn't have to be... Uh, big chunks. I know of some people who uh, spend at least an hour of mental prayer. See, they spend 30 minutes of that in the morning, 30 minutes of that uh, in the evening uh, doing mental prayer. Do just, just being with our Lord uh, personally, uh, intimately, and talking and praying with our Lord. Okay? Uh, in my case, I spread, it, I spread it in a whole day with 10 minutes 10-minute chunks of prayer throughout the day. See? And, uh, and that has been very, very helpful. That has been very, very advantageous. See? And that way, we can always reconnect with Jesus. We can always ask and consult Jesus about the affairs of the day. And we can always chat with Jesus in a very intimate way. See? And that is a very, very good Catholic practice which I would recommend everybody to do. Okay, so that's it for us, folks. I hope you find your um, minutes of the day uh, in your very busy day. Find that time. Find that time where you can, which you can devote to Jesus, visiting with Jesus the way Mary did. And that part will never be taken away from you. That is the best part. Okay, have a good day, everybody. And happy birthday, Jacob. Bye! Okay, bye-bye now.